Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, full screen, okay. So today's talk is on how hybrid work from home works out. Uh, this is joint work with Professor Nick Bloom and uh, James Liang. And this work is very preliminary. Um, so all the questions, uh, any questions are welcome. Um, so probably you all know, uh, this is a survey collected by Nick, uh, where we classified uh, all employ US employees in basically three large groups. About 55% of them are frontliners um, who have to, like even after the COVID, who have to be uh, uh, like uh, offline to, be, to do some physical work. And there are about 15% employees who mostly are uh, technicians who can work fully remote. And uh, we are interested in this middle group uh, where they mostly are graduates, like uh, professional managers and IT uh, programmers uh, who can have this hybrid work, uh, work schedule, which means uh, three days on the office, uh, two days at home or somewhere else. Um, probably you all know the literature on work from home by Professor Nick, uh, by, by Professor Nick Bloom. And uh, this paper we run the RCT a hybrid work from home. It extends prior well-identified impact of work from home literature by looking at uh, graduates in creative jobs, basically knowledge workers. And we also look at this hybrid scheme rather than fully remote. And we uh, intend to investigate the mechanism in terms of uh, time use, uh, messages, and teamwork. So just give you some preview of results. We find a huge reduction in attrition rates, and uh, we find the uh, Employees' job satisfaction score improved. Employees shift work from home, uh, work from work from home days uh, to other evenings and non work from home days, including the weekends. We call it flex uh, flexi time. Employees increased messaging and uh, video calls, even yeah, even in the non work from home days. And we find the lines of code and self access productivity improved. Uh, the firm is so happy with the result. So it rolled out to, uh, the policy, the arrangement to the entire company. So let me introduce the uh, experimental design first. So we work with trip.com, uh, which you all know, probably you all know is the largest travel agency in China and the third, third largest travel agency in the world. And it had a quarter in Shanghai, has about 35,000 employees. And this is their Shanghai uh, headquarter near the Hongqiao station. Um, we are lucky that the experiment period covers a period where uh, there are not many COVID cases in China and uh, everyone are fully vaccinated and everyone are required to fully uh, work on site. So the uh, middle of last year, James decided to run this RCT with the uh, Apple Hybrid plan. What the Apple Hybrid plan means is the uh, company choose Wednesday and Fridays for you. Uh, you can't choose other two days at your will and the employees can uh, work at home or somewhere else on these two days. So this rollout is actually in two stages. So end of last July, the company uh, surveyed 16, 12 engineers, marketing and finance employees in two divisions, that is air, uh, air ticket and IT, asking if they want to work from home on Wednesday Fridays. So this is the translation of the uh, willingness collection email, and basically it answers a few questions to make the employees less concerned. Uh, sorry, I, I, I have a question here. Yeah, yeah. So they have to uh, work from home on Wednesday and Friday. Can they choose on like which day they would like to stay at home? Uh, no, that's a good question. That's why we have to say the Apple plan because there are other uh, tech companies. I think, for example, Facebook or Meta, uh, before the pandemic, every Wednesday they can work from home. And during the pandemic and the two now, they let the company choose another day out of uh, another four days. So that that will that, uh, that kind of mix work from home plan will introduce a lot of coordination problem. Like if you go to the office and find no colleagues, you want to have a meeting. Like so this have, uh, Apple plan means the, uh, the day is fixed, you can't choose. I see. Yeah, so at least on that level, there's less coordination problem. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, to clarify, uh, these employees are qualified uh, in that to, to be qualified for the experiment, 
you can't be uh, like for the, you can't be in the in a service role. For example, there are admin people who everyone want to find and ask questions uh, in person so they can participate. And also the rookies and also people still in the probation or trial period can not participate. And uh, if someone join the team, join the uh, divisions during the experiment, uh, they are not allowed to participate. Um, so initially, uh, only 520 volunteers. So the old, bar old birthdays among them are randomized into hybrid work from home, start our, uh, early uh, August last year. Then at this point, James, James found this level is too low. He actually wants to give this opportunity to everyone. So the non-volunteers with old birthdays are also randomized into the treatment group. And uh, yeah, so this game is optional. So nobody are required to stay at home but uh, this is their right uh, to do so. And uh, they signed a contract to make them comfortable and uh, to guarantee all the perks um, uh, guarantee are still the same. And uh, yeah, so to the, to the left is a uh, photo of their uh, company. Basically it's like a typical tech company office. People sit in large decks uh, on four to six people. And uh, this to the left. Okay, Robin, yeah. sorry, okay, can you get a sense? Uh, you know, what's the what's the what's the rate of uh, uh, volunteer uh, workers? So how many workers? Yeah. Are? And then so, hundred actually volunteered. So what is the rate? 45, 40, 40, about forty-five. I remember. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, so, sorry. This. Yeah. yeah sorry. Right, yeah. 600 people were asked and uh, 500 they agreed voluntarily. So am yeah, I right? uh, about 40%, yeah, yeah. I see, and then, uh, you know, in stage two, almost mm -hmm. everybody, mm -hmm. so you say that uh, 1,100 non-volunteer, mm -hmm. they randomized, so, so what does it mean? So the remaining people, they mm -hmm. all randomized based on their birthdays. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So, so what happens is, uh, actually, James from the very beginning, he want to have this for everyone. So, so he didn't, or we didn't expect, we didn't anticipate the participation to be that low because a lot of, especially managers, are very concerned about it. Like they, they, they worry about, like, can't find the, their their employees. So initially, the volunteers are. And not as many as we expect, yeah. But so, 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 so that means actually that means everyone, uh, like all these 16, 12 employees are uh, randomized based on their birthdays. Yeah, but the, on which basis they feel like the 40% rate is too low or, you know, 30 to 40% is too low. Uh, I mean, I'm completely out of the literature, so I have no clue. The forty percent seems to me a reasonable number. So, is there any concern, or can you tell us a bit more about that? Uh, we didn't actually check whether this is high or low in the literature because I don't think there are ma many RCT on this anyway, and uh, all the literature on this uh, are new. Like, um, I think this is low just because, like. Just like James don't like it, right? Yeah, okay. he want because because we will see later. He he have this policy after after we did some preliminary analysis of this experiment. He wrote it out company wise. So he 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 like his company to be like a Silicon Valley type company where everyone have this right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. I I I have one more question. Yeah. Because uh, you said that uh, this uh, working from home schedule is uh, is optional, right? So you you mean it, nobody is required to work from home on Wednesday and Fridays. So do mm -hmm. you have a do you have a number saying that how many of them are really uh, working from home on these two days? Or yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's a good question. Um, I'm going to talk about that soon. Like that, that's okay. a take up. Yeah. Okay, okay. So be before that, I think this is the last slide. Before that, uh, this is just a slide of their uh. The headquarters, Shanghai headquarters, the fancy uh, building. So this is second floor, and you can see basically the departments sit together, and the within them teams sit together. Um, this is a balance between the volunteers and non-volunteers. 
uh, interestingly, based on their prior performance, there's no uh, difference, but uh, managers who have any managerial role are less likely to be volunteer, to, to volunteer. And uh, we also find uh, people with long commute, this is two way, like uh, back and forth, almost like very, uh, people, people live farther, farther away from the company, they are more likely to volunteer. Um, also people with less experience in the company are less likely to volunteer. And here is, uh, we find that uh, about one third of them have a graduate degree and almost all of them have an undergrad degree. So, so this, is, this, this is one major difference with uh, Nick's uh, previous study where, where it's on uh, call center employees. Yeah, let's look at the take up. So there are four groups uh, by treatment control and volunteer non-volunteers. So the gray line is the treat take up rate on Wednesday and Fridays for the treatment group uh, volunteers. And uh, this black line are the treated group uh, of non-volunteers. And uh, we see some uh, ups and downs because usually the take up on Friday are higher. Yeah, so the take up for the volunteers treated group is about 55%. And that of the non-volunteer treated group is almost 40%. Um, yeah, so let's look at what drives the take up. We find that people with kids, if you look at the last column, we find that uh, people with kids and uh, have long commute are more likely to take up. Uh, interestingly, we don't find significant difference in take up by gender and age. Uh, we do find some coordination. Here uh, is a weighted uh, bean scatter plot where we have uh, treated group employees uh, Wednesday and Friday take up on their teammates take up rate on Wednesday and Fridays. Uh, so this suggests that uh, uh, employees deliberately choose the day they work from home as their colleagues do. And uh, this coordination effect is not due to particular events or team difference, because uh, it's still there when we control the daily fixed effects and the individual fixed effects uh, or ma and, and manager fixed effects. That means uh, we're seeing each team. Um, let's look at the communication. This is uh, one channel. We want to detect some mechanism. Uh, so this is a screenshot of their uh, communication tool. It's basically pretty much like WeChat, but it's not WeChat. So it's supposed to be for work. And uh, you can also send the uh, attachments and files in this messaging system. Uh, that means the company don't rely on email uh, a lot. And uh, not surprisingly, this is the uh, hourly uh, message, uh, average message over the day. Uh, not surprisingly, on Wednesday and Fridays, the treatment uh, employees send about 60%, 16% more messages than their control group colleagues. Uh, what's interesting is on the other three days, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays, uh, there's still a gap, about uh, 9%. And uh, we have this regression by day, uh, where we find that the gap is there on each of the three days. Uh, I think the most interesting, interesting day is Tuesday, because you can argue on Monday and the Thursday, there may be carryover uh, unfinished conversations from the previous day, uh, where your colleagues are working from home. But Tuesday, uh, like because Monday everyone has to be on site, so Tuesday the increase are uh, likely to be driven by the unfinished conversation. So uh, we kind of guess this work from home will lead the, uh, the employees to more rely on message or have more uh, have a habit of messaging more. And uh, this is uh, the message over weekend. We also can find a, a gap here. And in terms of uh, response rate, so here the y-axis is a share of hourly message, uh, share of message uh, the people read within five minutes. We think that's uh, like fast, uh, fast checking or fast response. So we find that on Wednesday and Friday, the treatment group are significantly faster in reading messages than their uh, control group uh, colleagues. And to a less extent on uh, the other three days. Uh, I'm going to uh, skip this page. Yeah, basically we find the increase uh, of messages immediate rather than uh, gradual. 
And uh, we also find the treatment employees especially increase their messages to their team members uh, compared to non-team members and uh, to their close contacts com compared to non-close contact. So uh, what Professor Nick Bloom called this uh, soil effect means that uh, this communication will drive uh, this concentration of communication between teammates or close contacts will make your relationship with other colleagues uh, like fa uh, fa father. So this may not be the most efficient uh, uh, communication uh, pattern. And uh, in terms of Zoom meetings, uh, we use a peer control division, which is business uh, trip division to compare with the two participating divisions. We find that uh, the Zoom meetings uh, about increase about 50, 70% uh, uh, during the experiment, mostly driven by Wednesday and Fridays. And uh, let's talk about the labor supply. Basically the hours is their uh, labor supply. And the here uh, to the left is their time spent in the office. Basically this is measured by their time between car swap as the office entry and exit. We find that for the treatment group on Wednesday and Fridays, they spent uh, about 3.5 uh, less hour in the office each day. Uh, correspondingly, uh, their VPN time increased. So the VPN time is the time they have to connect to company server to access internal websites, software, and data. So this VPN time increase actually increased on all days, including the weekends. So probably we can assume the VPN time is, you, is a working time that you are not on the uh, company office. And uh, so the overall labor supply uh, in terms of using the increased VPN time minus the decreased office time is about 0.8 hour per week. And uh, our main hypothesis is this one, uh, flexi time as well as flexi place. So uh, basically employee flat out their working hours from office time or from the non-working from home days, sorry, all from the work from home days to the other evenings and uh, weekends. So here to the left, I plot the VPN time on non working from home days and weekends. And we find about 60% increase in VPN time for the treatment group. And to the right is their message outside the normal business hours. And we, we find about 1.6% uh, increase outside the normal business, business hours. So what the employees do is like uh, academics do, they don't work uh, all, all work uh, like the nine to five or 10 to six business hours. They kind of uh, work more in the evening and the weekends. And yeah, so probably most important is the performance. Uh, are there any questions at this point? I, I, yeah, I may, I may go too fast. Yeah, Xinjiang, uh, do, do you want to ask a question? Uh, no, 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 not yet. Okay, so uh, I'm trying to understand that the previous uh, one or two slides uh, uh, seem very interesting. So, uh, do you have uh, uh, any statistics about you know um, what is the share of uh, uh, messages or you know this uh, this online uh, meetings uh, just with colleagues or with uh, people outside the sea trip? Um, so. There are uh, upsides and downsides. Uh, for instance, um, if you know you try to communicate with uh, your colleagues within C trip, um, then actually uh, extending working hours to weekends and evening times may actually take a toll on your colleagues. Right? Just think mm -hmm. about you know I'm staying in office. I'm I, I'm expecting everyone to work between five uh, between eight uh, nine o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the afternoon and you're working at home you know uh, uh you you want to extend your working hours into evening but that that's a tax on me so so that may actually uh, uh have some side effects but suppose you are communicating with people outside the sea trip your clients want to have a chat you know uh uh, uh in the evening but you know uh, uh if uh, if uh, uh I'm, I'm only uh, uh, working between uh, nine and five, then he cannot find me, but now uh, he has a chance to talk to you. So that's a productivity game or whatever, efficiency game from the uh, perspective of a C-trip, 
right? So uh, do you have anything uh, or any statistics on that? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I think, I think uh, that's one reason we probably want to check the response rate. Like, uh, yeah, if, if, if you can't find your work from home colleagues or subordinates um, and they don't look, look at the message or don't respond to the message, that may reduce the team productivity. Uh, on, on communication between uh, internal people and like uh, clients, we do have business trip uh, records. I can check on that. Yeah. Yeah, I can check. So basically when they, when they have to go outside, uh, like be absent from the company, uh, they have they have they'll have a note in the system that I'm going to meet uh, these clients or I'm going to inspect these places. Um, yeah, we can check on that. Yeah, thanks. Uh, just to clarify, uh, I see your focus on this intent to treat uh, effect. Uh, mm -hmm. Should we understand that as uh, those who were treat who were treated but not uh, chosen? This option was not affected, uh, and it's all driven by those who are really treated, or actually there are also a lot of things going on within that two groups. In that, uh, uh, yeah, the compliance is about one, is about fifth, uh, half. Yeah, half. Yeah, like, yeah. I just wonder, yeah. should we uh -huh. just interpret your coefficient as a uh, uh, times two on the treated effect, or uh, there's also like a lot of you know, like those who are treated but not picking the uh, up their option actually also behave very differently. I'm just curious. Uh, yeah, I think so far we haven't. Yeah, I, I think if you think the coefficients here or uh, uh, coefficients everywhere, basically this is pulling everyone. Is uh, yeah. Uh, like this is intention to treat. Yeah, we. Yeah, you are right. We may multiply it by a multiplier, like maybe less than two. But yeah, we, we haven't seen too much about it. Um, in terms of heterogeneity, we haven't found much heterogeneity here. Yeah, probably that's one reason. I, I'll, I'll talk about that uh, more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there. Yeah, there are like long commutes and kids will drive drive up the take up. Yeah, but we do find we we don't find the. Uh, probably actually have a distribution of take up. Like we don't find the individuals to be too different in terms of their total take up. Yeah, um, yeah. but in terms of performance that I'll talk about, uh, I think the last section, uh, there are, we haven't found much heterogeneity in terms of performance. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay, so this is still labor supply. Okay. So the, so the firm has a rigorous uh, six months performance review to determine the pay and promotion. And uh, this 2021 H2 covers the uh, July from 20, July 2021 to January this year. So bas basically it overlaps with our experimental period. And uh, the managers and the uh, product leaders of each employee will sit down together and uh, discuss the performance of this employee. and. Uh, some, some teams will have a peer review section and uh, this will take like two weeks. So it's very uh, serious and uh, you'll get a letter grade just like taking a university class. So A is the best and uh, D is the worst. And we find no significant difference between the two group here. And uh, in terms of uh, promotion here, upgrade means uh, for example, like a bonus increase. So uh, I have yeah. questions here. Yeah. So who yeah. is going to give this grade to all these employees? Their team leaders or, or their, I mean, upper level uh, supervisors? Or, or I mean, who is going to assign these uh, ranks to all these employees? So basically, they are uh, direct boss. So the direct boss of each employees. Of course, they all, they may have different. So, so they, they have a major direct boss. And uh, for all the projects they participate, they'll have project leaders. For, so basically- For those directors, are they, are they possible to be assigned in the treatment group or to- Yeah, yeah, they, uh -huh. yeah. so the, so people, people will have like mid-level managers, they themselves may participate in the experiment and they themselves will be reviewed by uh, their boss one level up. 
better so drug box. Is, is there any effects of participating in the experiment on their, on, I mean, on their evaluation of other people? For example, like when you say that in the middle, for the middle, for the middle level managers, if they are assigned in this working from home experiment, mm -hmm. is it going to affect their evaluation of their lower employees? Yeah, that's a good question. There's no difference. We, we check that. Um, I think it's not in this slide, but we check uh, whether the whether the manager is in the treatment or in the control group, whether that will affect his uh, his grading for his subordinates. There's no uh, effect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, probably because probably because um this is this this letter grade is given at the end of experiment and uh, they they kind of find they kind of get used to it and uh, they figure out how to communicate how to uh, coordinate and also the because the uh, because the volunteer rate is low at the beginning so James kind of emphasized in the company that the managers shouldn't uh, discriminate just because someone wants to work from home. Okay. Yeah, and and also there are some. I, I think the assign because the assignment is random, and uh, within each team there are fair share of uh, control and treatment employees. And because this is very serious, like um, the employees actually have a chance to reveal themselves and their compare notes. So if the employees uh, think the, they they just get discriminated based on their take up or what or their assignment, they can they can actually dispute within the company. Okay. Yeah, thanks. And here the, the promote uh, really means one level up, for example, your role change from, from employee to manager. And uh, because the mixed evidence and no significance here, we find that in the short term, there's no uh, impact on performance. And uh, I can kind of give you a preview. So this is the first half of this year. So another review. Uh, to review the performance after the experiment to now. Uh, I think we, for, for those people participating in the experiment and still in the company, there is no uh, difference between them um, in the second review. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you a clarification question? So upgrade, do you mean their performance upgrade from B to A? This is upgrade? Uh, no, this this part is only about uh, promotion. So the so mm. yeah. there is another so, category called the promote. Yes. So what what is upgrade? So for example, this promote is really like a assistant professor to associate, associate to a uh, tenure professor. And right. we all, I think we all know even for each level of professorship here, there are different uh like finer uh uh like levels like ladders. So, so upgrade professor for professor to chair professor uh, it's upgrade. kind of that yeah okay. kind of like like you, you not... have a bonus in place yeah yeah uh, you yeah okay so also related with their payment income i mean their salary upgrade when yes increase salary. yes yeah upgrade is at least upgrade involves at least a, a bonus increase and salary increase yeah you uh for example your role may not be changed you still have the same uh, size uh, team teams uh, subordinates, but yeah, you 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 kind of uh, uh, paid more. Okay. You're right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, here uh, we just saw this coefficient, and uh, if we look at uh, the other covariates, we don't find the heterogeneity here yet. And uh, this is on the this is when the dependent variable is performance, and uh, here is when the dependent variable is promotion. Um, probably people are uh, interested in different type of jobs, different roles. Here we have a very um, cross uh, classification. So we look at the programmers, the coders compared to non-coders, non-coders involving the finance and the marketing people. And uh, we, find the, we find actually between this, just this binary distinction, there's no, there's no difference between them, between coders and non-coders. So, so Robin, so it's actually yeah. quite quite surprising. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm wondering if there's anything uh, to do with kind of self selection because if uh, if it is entirely random, then I would expect say uh, young colleagues, especially those who just got into uh, the unit, uh, you know their performance will be probably 
significant discounted by working uh, from home because you know their directors uh, their supervisors uh, don't know them uh, well and if uh, they did if uh, anything happened directors may actually uh, feel you know skeptical uh, about you know their uh, uh, input um, mm -hmm. so uh, those uh, uh, those uh, well experienced workers and who you know uh, 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 their supervisors know quite well, then this kind of communication cost will be much less. So that's why I, especially when I see the interaction between treat and tenure, there's no uh, difference at all. So mm -hmm. that worries me uh, in the sense that the the the, uh, uh, the volunteer terribly uh, uh, working from home guys, uh, they are self-selected. So is there any concern on that? Yeah, I think that's a question. Um, that's a good question. We, we, I, I haven't concerned about it, but it's very likely like young people or people who don't have a very long uh, experience with, uh, with, uh, with their managers will be very cautious in terms of uh, take up. Yeah, they may have to, they, they may have to think about it by showing up, uh, have more face time. That's that's likely. Yeah. So you you showed us some statistics at the beginning, right? So uh, mm -hmm. any correlation uh, between say the take up and uh, uh, years of service? Uh, yeah, I think we check that, but uh, there's no. It doesn't matter much in terms of uh, take up. Yeah, so the tenure, right? Tenure with take up. Yeah, the, the tenure, people with more experience in the firm are slightly, but not, yeah, insignificantly more likely to take up, yeah. I see. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, so here we, we also see no uh, evidence of performance spillover within teams. That is, if my teammates are more likely to be to be in the uh, treatment group or more likely to work from home, whether that will affect my performance. Uh, so the second, so this one, the second row here is the ratio of your teammates uh, take yourself out is in the treatment group. And the third one is a dummy of whether you have uh, teammates in the treatment group. And we have we 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 didn't find uh, evidence of performance spill over here. But did you uh, did you yeah. check whether the team leader in uh, working from home matters? Uh, I mean, in terms of what, what uh -huh. you see the heterogeneity effect in uh, in terms of uh, regarding the performance, I think maybe. Uh, Maybe it's important for for you to see whether the team leader is working from home and uh, and if just another team member working from home. I don't know whether that is a big difference there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you you, you okay. show the regression with the speed over effect, right? So yeah, yeah. And then okay. my my point is that if, if the team the, the team treatment percentage, could you check uh, whether this is actually as a team leader? working from home and uh, another team is a team leader is not working from home to see whether that is a performance difference. Okay, uh, yeah, that's a good question. We, we can check that. I think maybe uh, in backup slides I already checked that. Yeah, but we, we can double check. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the team leader in terms, this is, uh, we are talking about performance here, but in a previous slide, when we talk about the coordination of whether to come to the office, uh, whether you are both show up or whether you're both uh, Go to the office on Wednesday, Friday. Doesn't matter much. Uh, what matters is for the coordination effect. What matters is your uh, team average, your your uh, uh, the ratio of uh, show up or ratio of stay at home on Wednesday, and Friday. That that determine your uh, decision to whether to stay at home on Wednesday and Friday. Yeah, yeah. But I I think we should we should double check on this. Maybe or, or we should show this. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, what we do find here is we find that uh, the treatment employees write uh, eight line eight percent more lines of code. This may not be a very good measure of productivity, but uh, we don't have uh, too much other uh, productivity measures, so we check this one anyway. 
Um, so the increase of uh, code uh, line of codes is probably is mainly on the uh, uh, office days, not working from home days. Yeah, what we do find is people's expectation of productivity increase. Uh, so we have two services, baseline, uh, baseline and endline service. So we ask the question to the employees, how do you think this work from home will impact your productivity compared to working in the office? So the mean productivity impact. So we take the, this, these are the choices and we take the midpoint of each uh, group to, the, to do this mean uh, calculation. And the productivity impact, the mean productivity impact was 0.06% uh, in the baseline and it increased to 1.8% in the, in the end line. Both the end line level and the change from baseline to end line is significant at 1% level. And interestingly, this change is no different between treatment and control group. Uh, so that implies you don't need to be in the treatment group yourself to update this belief. Like the, the control group can observe what their colleagues do and to update this, uh, this belief. And we do find, uh, so here we do find that uh, people in the baseline who report they have, uh, who have higher expectation indeed have perform, sorry, performance better. Uh, so this y-axis, the change is, is we use the uh, H1, so sorry, H2, 2021 H2 uh, letter grade to minus the 2021 H1 letter grade to have a performance uh, change. So we kind of find that people who answer at the baseline that were more optimistic indeed like have slightly better uh, performance change. And we also find this convergence story. So again, this is the same uh, data as the previous uh, plot. And we find the non-volunteer initial, non-volunteers initially very uh, pessimistic and they, bought, uh, they turn to slightly positive about this productivity expectation. Um, yeah, so we also find uh, this treatment group uh, have re reduced their non-working days, which include sick leave, absence, and leaving early or take paid holidays by about 12%. Uh, so, so this actually match with uh, our flexi time hypothesis. So it's very likely that uh, employees will take the opportunity on Wednesday and Fridays to go to uh, hospitals, go to dentists, like uh, have other uh, house duties, domestic duties and they'll work more in the evenings and uh, in the weekend. And uh, yeah, related to, the, related to that, they are, we, they are less likely to uh, sub apply for sick leave or be absent from the work. Um, probably more strikingly is this attrition rate. So we find the attrition rate uh, for the treatment group reduced about, by about 30% compared to the control group. And the difference is significant at five percent, and uh, the largest drop is for the volunteers. So, so the, for the volunteers who randomized into the control group, they have the highest attrition uh, rate among the participants. It's about nine nine point six percent, and the people are uh, concerned about whether this difference is driven by this uh, called rate sentiment effect, which means people are signed into the control group, especially the volunteers who got in, uh, sent into the control group are very unhappy and uh, disappointed. So, so because of that, they'll leave the company. Uh, we don't think that's, uh, that's a very important driver. Uh, to answer that concern, we have two points. First, we compare this uh, attrition level to the company to other divisions attrition level, especially the marketing and the business trip division who we think are the most comparable divisions uh, in the company. So basically all the other divisions during the same time period, like which is the second half of last year, have about 10% uh, attrition rate. Um, we also plot this attrition, uh, cumulative attrition rate uh, over the weeks into the experiment. And we find that attrition is increased gradually rather than uh, immediately. Yeah, so, so to, to, some, to some extent, even the even this 7% uh, attrition rate for the, for the control group is lower than the other uh, divisions in the company. Uh, and also there's another, uh, there's another concern that uh, this work from home will blur the boundary of uh, work, and, uh, work and life. Uh, so we, we do have this uh, job satisfaction survey, 
where we ask the employees whether they are uh, going to recommend the company to the friends, uh, whether that means whether they are in, uh, helping hiring. Uh, we also ask their work and life satisfaction, their work life balance, and uh, we especially find the volunteers, uh, their, uh, job, their satisfaction increase a lot. So after the experiment end, uh, we did some preliminaries uh, early February this year. And uh, during February, the company board uh, seeing the results think this is very good. So they rule out the policy company-wise starting this March. Uh, as we all know, uh, this, this process kind of interrupted by the Shanghai lockdown. So we'll continue to collect data uh, for another six months from this end of this June to end of this year. Uh, in particular, we'll pick another two uh, pure control divisions and uh, continue collect data on long, uh, mid to longer term uh, performance, promotion and attrition. And uh, to summary, the employees appear to enjoy work from home, especially uh, even the non-volunteers have almost 40% take up and this work from home reduced attrition and non-working days by, by above 30 and 12%. Employees appear to also flex their time, work less on work from home days, but more on the weekends and evenings. Employees positively update their beliefs after experience on experiencing this, and the impact on performance is small and insignificant. Suggests work from home can be positive for the firm and ex ante probably underappreciated. Uh, I think since we, we still have time, uh, there are other benefits from this. Uh, we haven't included in the in the meta-analysis, first, uh, in, according to their internal uh, calculation and the, also the calculation by uh, industry standard, the cost of attrition or the cost of replace a uh, created employees with a new one and train them uh, is about 20% uh, of the yearly wages. And uh, there's one channel where you, if you have a stable workforce, uh, you'll have higher productivity because you have more experience and uh, uh, the tax sector is famous for high turnover rate. And also for the in, in employees, uh, the saved living costs can be huge because uh, we kind of we all know like their company, for example, the headquarters is near the uh, Hong Chao train station. And uh, there are employees who whose home are not in Shanghai or not Shanghai local people are made uh, are mainly from uh, Jiangsu province and uh, Hangzhou. So in that sense, um, if if they have this two days Work uh like work at home, they can back and forth uh, travel back back and forth on Monday, probably and uh, Thursday only. Yeah, so this is some preliminary sense during the lockdown. So during the almost three months lockdown in Shanghai, we find the uh, uh the the people who in the uh experiment, uh the treatment group uh, submit more lines of code and have more messages. But in terms of VPN hour, uh, they are pretty much the same. Yeah, uh, pre pretty much this is all I have today. And uh, I think this is ongoing, ongoing thing, uh, not only our uh, paper, but also this uh, phenomenon. This probably is one of the largest shock to the labor market in decades. And uh, yeah, I think also this is pretty, pretty, uh, like the return to office in the US is a hot topic where employees kind of have a lot of bargaining power and they don't want to fully re, re, uh, re, uh, return to the office or they don't even uh, they, they don't even want to hybrid. Some, some of them want to, want to fully remote. Uh, yeah, so still under debate. And maybe that's one reason it's worth studying uh, whether hybrid scheme is, is the, the best or what's the cost and benefits of that. So I, I I have a I have a, a question here. Why don't you uh, do two treatment? Right? Why is a hybrid work? Another is a totally working from home as a, as a, as what James do in another paper. And then to, and then in this case, then you can compare which one's better, right? In the same yeah. context. Yeah, that, that's I think that's still yeah that's a good question. So so currently, what Nick want to do next is whether we can find a partner to to try this fully fully remote work. This is what a lot of US companies are doing. So why we don't do that at the beginning is we kind of still, even James, like still not 
too sure about uh, about this, like what what is things going wrong, like. So that's why we want to track longer term, mid to long longer term, uh, effects or equilibrium when when the policy is ruled out company wise. Yeah. So people worry about like since since we all go far apart. Yeah, but I think I think that's doing that's that's uh what's doing that's very very good topic. Yeah, to try to try fully remote compare fully remote. Right. Yeah. So another another oh sorry Michael please go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, another question here is that because uh, the, the, the working from home days are Wednesday and Friday. So Friday is kind of like a special, right? Because, uh, you know, Friday is uh, right before the weekend. So I was wondering if we change the day to say uh, Tuesday and Thursday, can you see another results or can you see different results? So my question here is that, uh, is it possible to run an RCT to see uh, which day matters the most? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's good. That's another that's another thing like we would like to try if we have the opportunity. Like if we like people to choose which two days are optimal or which or how many days, two is optimal or three is optimal. I think that's I think that's all good question. Yeah. Right. Yeah, fr Friday when we 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 do survey people like which two days. So so although we told them it is chosen by the company, it's fixed. It's on Friday and this, uh, Wednesday. We do at the beginning ask which two days uh, they prefer. And Friday have highest vote because I guess people all want to make it uh, into a long weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so whatever, like, even if you let them choose, they'll choose Friday anyway. Um, right. Yeah. Because uh, because I saw one of your results shows that uh, the needs uh, working from home schedule reduce people's uh, like uh, sick for leave or other absence, right? So so yeah. I was wondering whether it is because so before the experiment, the people uh, and then results is is the largest for Friday. So I was uh -huh. wondering whether it is driven by by uh, for example, like before the experiment, uh, those employees they they fake, fake their information. They they ask for sick leave on Friday because they want to make a long 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 weekend. And after the experiment, they don't have to do it. So you see, it's a big reduction. Yeah, it's it's very likely. Yeah, so bas yeah, basically we can show we can show the pre experiment baseline. So that's, this, this Friday maybe that's right. is, uh, is, is quite interesting because uh, people usually don't want to work on Friday because they expect to have a weekend. So yeah, yeah it's uh, right. Thank you. It's a very yeah. interesting paper. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'm trying to figure out. So so all your in, all your results uh, suggesting working from home seems like a better off uh, uh, a choice, right? So productivity, no obvious uh, productivity decline and uh, attrition rate goes down and people feel happy. Um, but then now, I, now this time I have to uh, go back to my earliest question. So why there are only 40% take up? Um, so it seems that this, uh, this, uh, this choice is uncorrelated with uh, almost like all characteristics that you can have data on. Right, so um, so in the end of the day, uh, did you talk to those guys who uh, didn't actually uh, uh, pick this opportunity up? Is there any concern in their mind? Um, or you know, if uh, after this uh, research, after people had some experience on that to see, you know, their colleagues did it well, if you do do it next time, then the rate will be very different. So in the end of the day, it's just a psychological concern, you know, uh, uh, it's a stigma, so I don't want to do it. Or it's a technical constraint, you know, I'm in a position which doesn't allow me to, to work from home. Uh, so can you uh, say something on this distinction? Yeah, uh, I think that's two things. So for the, for the constraint that my jobs, my role doesn't allow me to work from at all, that's excluded by the criterion in this uh, experiment. So all the 16, 12 employees should, should be able to work from home to some extent. Uh, but there's another constraint that especially, uh, you know, the, the Chinese company kind of different. They have, they have very heavy, they kind of, uh, they have like, when they, when they release a new updates or new products, 
to be safe, they want to go to uh, go to the company together rather than submit the test to the new uh, product, new website at, at home, because they'll be they have to be fully undo, uh, they have they have to be fully responsible for product failure. So if there is a deadline to launch products or update your website, they kind of all co coordinate to go to the company. And for such reasons, uh, they they are very cautious in doing that. So for such reasons, the take up is 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 low. That's my driver. And uh, and even here during the experimental period, uh, we kind of say the take up is slightly increasing over time. What I don't have here, but um, yeah, I, I kind of want I kind of want to argue the the take up is slightly increasing. I I think. Um, I talked to the company people yesterday, and uh, when they look at uh, the other company, the other divisions who didn't participate in this uh, experiment, so for the for their take up after the lockdown, it it is increasing. So that's why we want to track for another half year. So we we, we guess the take up uh, will will increase over time, and uh, especially um, the take up at the beginning at, at, at the beginning of March. Is lower for the all the other divisions, and it's highest for these two divisions who already experienced this. Probably because they, they got used to it, they figure out all the costs and benefits. Yeah, um, and yeah, we do think we do we do think this one day equilibrium. This I don't think we don't think this one day will be the equilibrium in the end. Yeah, we, we yeah. Let's see what will what will general equilibrium in the company. What will that be? Yeah. But I I I mean the the other yeah the other the other reasons the this take up is kind of constrained because although this experimental period is not affected I think from from beginning of this year is massive layoff in the tax sector in China and and the people kind of very cautious about their jobs um and also. Maybe it's a culture thing because when we look at Singapore, it seems that the return to office in Singapore is very successful compared to the US and the UK. Like even the, the Singapore uh, Singaporean uh, employees are given the chance, the, the return to office rate is very high compared to the, the US and UK numbers. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, is there, yeah, no questions? Yeah, yeah we still have eight minutes. Well, let's say something for, for fun, if I may. This, I mean, this is, I no one talk about the elephant in the room. This is the CEO who strongly promote this mode, uh, whereas many other form CEOs wouldn't uh, necessarily have the same preference. I mean, all these results are very much who could who dare uh, to punish these people who chose to uh, work at home, if the CEO strongly think that uh, you know this is a good uh, uh, way of work, uh, I, I'm I, I'm just wonder how how should we think about this? You know, uh, in the end, I think we would want to really apply this to all the other forms. Wouldn't that all? I mean, how could we really generalize these findings? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, since that's a fair question. Like, it it definitely depends on the higher level uh, attitude of the company. Yeah. I wonder, since yesterday a lot of people use social media data. I, I saw this mode was reported online and discussed online. It might be interesting to analyze a little bit general public. Uh, sentiment uh, about this experiment. And uh, I mean, that's not a representative, but it's kind of, it goes a little bit uh, beyond this form. I, I just found all these findings are very much dependent on the form and the, the leadership of the form. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree, especially for, for I, I guess, for Chinese firms. Like for most, I, I say, for most US firms, other than Tesla, maybe Elon Musk want people to come back. But but his employees are mostly uh like engineers who have to be on site to some extent. But I agree, we kind of say the CEO or the company is more like a US company where the boss doesn't have the power or, or have the culture to 
to dictate the yeah people's people's this uh like decision. But I think I, I'm not sure like how how do we. So uh, let, let me give you let me give you an idea. I, I thought about mm -hmm. this. I'm glad you know Risha uh, brought this issue up. So so one way to to do it is just to check if uh, you know. Uh, this uh, this rating or whatever you call it, uh, say evaluation results, uh, mm -hmm. depends on where uh, the director super supervisor is in the hierarchical system. So if uh, the director is very close to James Liao, then you know if uh, he is uh, directly supervised by James Liao, and he understands you know how strong uh, James feel about it, and then he okay. might you know. Uh, uh, you know, adjust, you know, his evaluation, there is some bias, but, you know, for, for those directors that, that are very distant to, yeah. then they, they, yeah. they, they have no clue what's going on. They, they, they might be less uh, influenced by James' opinion and yeah. their evaluation is more likely to be unbiased. So the, my point is that if uh, the evaluation is uh, uh, homogeneous, you know, across uh, these uh, supervisors, no matter the, where they are in the hierarchical mm -hmm. system, then I think it's uh, it's 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 okay, uh, but you know, uh, if you see the results uh, biased, uh, depending on where they are, then you know, Rachel's uh, concern is really a big concern. Oh, yeah, I, I think we can check that. Um, to be honest, the uh, managers here can be very base base, uh, base level managers, and uh, as I understand, it, there's no managers here. Um, Kind of at very high level that is close to James, so I guess all the managers here are kind of they have they have they don't directly report to James. They have like at least two level of other higher level bosses between them and James. I think yeah, but we can check the levels like whether that affect their uh grade giving like letter giving. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah. But I, I, I think that's helpful, but may not fully, under, fully answer uh, Professor Jia's question. No, I wish every leader is <laughs> like James Liang, but uh, that's but it's not, it's difficult. I also, uh, I, I don't, yeah, in a Chinese form, everyone is in the hierarchy. How could you escape the hierarchy? The lower I am, the more worried about the leader's opinion, I, you know, as my humble okay. opinion, <laughs> uh, anyway. But it's yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. So maybe maybe one last question. Uh -huh. Is the income affected by the by the by the uh, working from home schedule? No. Uh. So the income yeah. can only be affected by the by the performance and the promotion decision at the end. Yeah. Oh, so you mean uh, the the only the only uh, determining factor is the is the performance right and promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so during the experiment, your your income or your compensation, your perks will not be affected. Okay, so it seems like according to the results, the income is not going to be affected. Yeah, yeah, yeah.